Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. I thought it was about time I did another You Can Make This Soap video. So today we're going to have a look at salt bars. Now salt bars are great. They feel really luxurious when you use them. They seem to last forever in the bath or the shower because they're super hard. And also they're relatively inexpensive to make because they have a high percentage of coconut oil, which when we think about the types of oils that we use, that can be one on the lower end of our cost range. And also salt, obviously depending on where you get it from, is fairly inexpensive as well. But as I said, they do make an absolutely gorgeous bar of soap that does feel really lovely on your skin due to the high super fat content and they also lather really well because of the high percentage of coconut oil countering against the effects of the salt because salt will stop lather. Coconut oil really is the only thing that can counter against that salt. Now, there is a recipe that goes with this video, but it's not actually a recipe that I've developed. This recipe was developed by a lovely lady called Tanya Teggy in collaboration with Scott Granger. Now, these two people are um, a couple of people that run a Facebook group all about cosmetics and EU regulations. So therefore, if you're someone who has to follow EU cosmetic regulations, so maybe you sell soap in the UK or something, then this would be a really good Facebook group for you to join because it's really helpful. We've got a lot of people discussing the regulations, the thing that you can and you can't do and all of that sort of stuff. And it's an absolutely superb, supportive Facebook group. Now, Scott, um, who is the actual sort of owner of the group, is actually one of our cosmetic chemists in the UK. And it's him, as I said, and Tanya who have developed this recipe and they've made it available for us to use free of charge. And I do have permission to use this recipe and tell you about it in this video. Now, just a couple of things about um, using this recipe. First of all, if you are someone who just wants to make some salt bars for your own use, or maybe you're someone who doesn't have to comply with EU cosmetic regulations. So maybe you're in the US or something. You can, if you fancy, tweak this recipe, muck around with it and tailor it and do basically what you want with this recipe. It's up to you. I personally quite like it how it is. However, if you are, say for example, in the UK, or basically you need to follow EU regulations because you sell your soaps in the EU, including the UK at the moment, then if you're gonna use this recipe, there are two things that you need to consider. First of all, you need to obtain an assessment that goes with this recipe. Just using this recipe and making salt bars or any soaps does not entitle you to sell them in the UK. So if you want to sell soap in the UK, you have to have all of your products assessed by a cosmetic chemist. And that is the same for these salt bars. So even though this recipe has been developed um, in you know, combination with a cosmetic com chemist that doesn't entitle you to sell these bars. You still need to apply for the assessment. Now, Scott has actually produced an assessment for us at a very reasonable rate, far cheaper than you'd normally be able to get. So of course, I'm gonna leave a link to that if you would like to obtain that assessment so you can legally sell these bars in the UK or the EU, obviously. And the other thing to bear in mind, again, if you are subject to EU regulations and you want to sell these bars, you cannot change this recipe, okay? You can't muck around with it, you can't alter the percentages. What's in the recipe are the things that you have to use and you cannot alter it. 
If you stray from the recipe, then again, you would not have a soap that would be legal for you to sell. So, there's all our sort of rules and regulation bits, and I will mention a few bits and pieces as we're going through the video as well. But obviously, where I talk about regulations as we're going through, if you're not selling these bars or you're not subject to those regulations, then obviously you can maybe tweak things how you'd like to. Now, I'm going to make these bars in a loaf mould today. I've used this recipe on a number of occasions and it's a really good recipe because it makes a lovely bar of soap, but it also does give you a reasonable amount of working time, especially if you make them in the way that I'm going to show you today. I've made them in cavity moulds and they work really well and you can even get a good amount of detail from cavity moulds. I'll show you some pictures at the end of some of them that I've made in cavity moulds. Um, but as I said, I'm going to use a loaf mould today just because I think people sometimes find that a little bit more scary with salt bars because you have to get your timing right and cut them at the right time otherwise you're going to end up with a complete brick of soap that's just going to shatter if you manage to cut it at all. So we'll make sure that we look at that and do that right. Now because this is one of my you can make this soap videos I'm actually going to go right from basics and explain all elements of making this salt bar. So there may be some things that perhaps you don't really need. So for example I'm going to start off with some good old soapy maths which will take us through how we actually get the salt bar recipe and adapt it to fit our own moulds. Now, if you don't need stuff like that, well then just skip it. And what I've done is in the description, I've put some timings in the description, but also depending on what device you're watching on, you should find sort of along the scroll bar here that there are some chapters. So therefore, if you don't want to watch the soapy maths bit and you want to get straight on to um, making the soap, you can just click on those segments and that will take you to the relevant part of the video. Oh God, that's enough talking from me, isn't it? Come on, let's go make some soap. So to start off with our salt bar, let's calculate how much we need to put into our soap mould. So grab a salt mould that you're going to use, and I'm presuming here that you know what you normally put into your own soap mould. So as you can see with mine, I've written that I normally have 1,625 grams of soap in my soap mould. Now that's total soap that I'm interested in, and we want to work in totals, whereas I know in the past I've often gone about oil percentage, but we want totals here. Now, if we bring in the salt bar recipe itself, now the recipe I've put on the screen is the standard recipe that's given in the assessment. And that has 1000 grams of oil, and in total, it comes to 1789 grams. So to take that recipe and put it into my mold, I'm gonna need to take the total amount that I'd normally use, and that's the 1625, and then divide that by the total amount that we get from the standard salt bar recipe, and that's that 1789. If you times that by 100, you'll actually get the percentage of the salt bar recipe that you need. So as you can see, for my recipe, I need 91% of the standard recipe that we've been given. Now, once we know the size of the recipe that we need, we've got two ways that we can deal with that. We can either just literally take the standard recipe and for me, times it by the 91%. Now you can see mine has actually come to three grams more than I actually need, but that's not going to make any difference in my mould, is it? And it's just a little bit of rounding in the figures. And we also need to calculate the amount of additions that we want. So that will be our clays and our essential oil. 
So doing exactly the same thing, I'm just going to take the clay. In the full recipe, we're allowed 10 grams of clay. So for me, if I times that by 91%, that will give me 9.1 grams in my entire loaf. And my essential oil, we're allowed 30 grams of essential oil. So that will give me 27 grams. Now, if you're making these bars for your own personal use or you're not subject to EU regulations, you can obviously muck around with the additives as much as you like. Obviously, making sure you're still saying within safe usage limits. Now, you may feel more comfortable actually popping the recipe through soap calc, and that's always a good thing to do, isn't it? Whenever you've picked up a recipe that you haven't put through soap calc. So all I'm just doing here is just dropping in the recipe and here I'm just using the percentages from the recipe. So you could either do it in grams or ounces and fill in that column, or you could just do the percentages like I'm doing and filling in the percentage column. I know overall I need 910 grams of oils for my loaf. Now, a couple of things you need to be aware of. In this recipe, the water is set at 25% of oils and the super fat is set at 15%. I'm just gonna get rid of the fragrance oil amount because we'll just deal with that separately. Once you've got all your elements in, then let's press calculate our recipe. And we can see we've got our 100% added up nicely and our 910 grams of oil. We can then go view print the recipe and we can see that we've got what we need. Now I've just cut the bit out that I want so we can just talk about this in a little bit more detail. So we've now got our full recipe. So if I just bring in those figures that we calculated manually, you can see that we're ending up with the same figures. Now I've been through two ways of doing it here. You clearly don't need to do both. Pick the one that you like the best. So if you like just doing it manually on a piece of paper, that's fine, as long as you're happy that your calculations are accurate. If you feel safer and happier putting it through a lie calculator, then do that. But remember, you're going to have to do those adjustments for things like the water percentage and the super fat. Now, if we have a look at what I've got here in soap calc, can you see that the total soap weight that we've got has come to 1264 and we were expecting a recipe to come to 1628 so that doesn't agree at this point and the reason for that is because in soap calc you don't add things like your salt in do you just literally put your oils and, and that sort of stuff into soap calc so if we add on the amount of salt that we're going to be using we can see we've got the right amount that we need Okay, let's make our soap then, shall we? So the first thing I do, either the night before or maybe at least a few hours before, is take some distilled water and I warm it up in the microwave so it's reasonably hot. And I'm going to use this to disperse my clay. Now this is going to help you out in two ways. First of all, it's going to prevent you getting so much acceleration when you put the clay into your soap because it's already been diluted and absorbed some moisture. And also secondly, it's going to make sure it's nicely dispersed so you don't get any of those nasty blobby speckly bits. Now I've used about 15 grams of water here, so effectively sort of a, a two to one mix against your clays. And I just take that out of the water I was going to use in my lye solution. Now at this point it will be really very fluid, but what you'll see is after we've let it sit for a few hours, it will have actually thickened up as that clay starts to absorb that water. So here's that clay mixture a few hours later, just before we make our soap. And maybe you can see here that it's gone from that very watery consistency to a thicker liquid as that clay has absorbed that water and it's now ready to use in our soap. Also make sure you've got everything else ready before you start. So I've measured out my salt here. I'm just using a fine sea salt. Make sure when you're using your salt, whether it's sea salt or Himalayan salt, that it's just pure salt, that it hasn't got any caking agents in or anything like that, because that can cause your batter to seize and do all sorts of odd stuff and 
sometimes even the salt bars just don't set up if you've got odd additives in your salt. I've also mixed up my lye solution and I've melted my oils and I've got both of these to the low 80s degrees. I find that's a good temperature to work with in this recipe because it will stop any issues like false trace or anything but also it will give you a reasonable amount of time to work bearing in mind things like clays and salt can actually accelerate your recipe. So I'll just gently pour my lye into my oils and I'll give them a little stir just to make sure they're nicely dispersed and not all sitting at the bottom of the oils and then we'll just start stick blending gently. Now don't go too mad with your stick blender. You don't want to get this to a thick trace and then not be able to do anything with it. Really what you're looking for is to take this just past emulsion or at the most to a light trace. Now, if you're unsure about spotting either of those stages, I'm going to link a video for you in the description below that I've actually made that clearly explains and shows you exactly how to spot each stage of trace. You might find that useful to go and have a look. So I'm literally just doing little pulses for maybe two or three seconds with my blender. Then I'm stopping the blender and stirring the batter and then a couple of pulses again and between each of those I'll lift the stick blender out of the jug and just check to see what stage I'm at. Have I reached emulsion yet or do I need to blend for a little bit longer? Now once I'm certain that my oils and lye are emulsified, I'm going to bring in my salt. But notice here how fluid my batter is at the moment. We're not going to put our salt in and then pour it straight away. Because all that would happen in that situation is you'd pour it into your mould and your salt would all then just sink right to the bottom of your mould. So here I'm actually just looking for the very start of a thin trace. So as soon as I get the lightest touch of a trail coming on my soap, that's when I'm going to pour in my salt. Now as you pour that salt into your batter, it is quite likely that you might introduce some air at that stage. It's not a problem, as long as you just mix it in gently, then that's fine and you should be able to disperse those air bubbles. I'm going to split my batter into two. I want about a quarter of it to have the clay in and the rest of it to be uncoloured. So I'm just weighing my total mix. I already know the weight of my jug so I'm just going to deduct that off and then work out a quarter of my batter which I can then put into another jug. This is just as you can see the jug that I had my salt in. That's fine, we can just mix in those last little granules of salt into the batter at that point. And I'm just going to give it a really good stir before I divide it out. Because remember at the moment we're still at a pretty thin trace and that salt could be sinking. So give it a good stir and then split those batters out. So now time for fragrance. I'm using pink grapefruit for my salt bars. Now remember if you're doing the actual official assessment to sell under EU regulations, you've got a specific types of essential oils that you can use and you do need to make sure you get the correct varieties. So do check the proper name of the essential oil, not just the pink grapefruit or whatever they happen to call it. 
So I'm just going to weigh out my essential oil to get the correct amount in each part of my batter. Now bear in mind we've got the salt in already so this will be thickening up but because we stopped at that really light trace we've got time to be working with this. We haven't actually turned into some sort of thick sludgy dough at this stage or anything. And then just adding in our clay. Now because we've dispersed this a few hours ago it's already absorbed a lot of water so it will still accelerate but it won't accelerate as badly as if you just popped the clay in dry or if you've just given it like a quick mix with some water a few minutes ago or anything. So pre-dispersing it is definitely the way to go to help you control that acceleration. Now you can really do any pour that you fancied and if you've been careful with the way that you've mixed you should still have time to get a nice fluid pour going on. I've known a number of things, drop swirls and all sorts of stuff with this recipe. Now I'm going to do an ombre pour for this soap and this is a pour that does take quite an, an amount of time and you can see how we can work with this batter and still get a successful pour. The batter that's got the clay in will thicken up quicker than the uncoloured batter. So if we're doing some sort of ombre pour, we want to start with the coloured batter at the bottom so that we are using that up and we are actually diluting it and keeping it fluid as we go up through the mould. So I'm going to be working from my coloured batter jug, pouring a little bit down the wall of my mould and then adding some uncoloured batter and as we said that one's a little bit more fluid so it'll keep that coloured batter flowing nicely for us. Pour again, add a little bit more uncoloured and what will happen is the colour will gradually get more and more diluted and create our ombre as we go up through the soap. And as we get to the end of the pour, we're going to be pretty well left with just the uncoloured batter. Now you could do any sort of pour that you like. And this one is just a little bit more complicated because of how long it takes to do the pour. But I've had a huge amount of success. And as I said, I'll show you some pictures at the end of just doing simple things like hanger swirls and drop swirls. Because you can get those poured really quite quickly. As your mould starts to fill up you want to lower the angle so you get it sitting on a flat base and do make sure that you do this really gradually. What you quite often find is people actually drop a mould down too quickly and then you end up with these weird sort of slips or steps in the design of your soap and it doesn't look very appealing. So gradually lower your mould down. As you can see I've used a very highly technical tea towel screwed up there underneath my mould to just gradually lower it a bit. And then as we get to the end of our jugs, just scrape out your jugs and just make sure that as you scrape them out, to preserve the ombre effect, scrape them over to the side that you were pouring the soap into. Don't just scrape them across the top of the soap because then you'll end up with some weird sort of roof on the top of your ombre. Then we'll just give everything a nice little tap down and just clean up around the mould. And then I'm just going to let that sit for a few minutes so I can texture the top. So I've left this sitting for about 5 or 10 minutes and my top is still quite movable. It hasn't gone all stiff um, but it will actually hold a shape as I go through and texture. Okay, so you can texture the top anyhow you like. I'm just doing a little swoopy design here, as you can see, with a little measuring spoon. And 
and I am going to see pop my soap as normal. Now people sometimes think this sounds a little bit odd because of the speed that salt bars set up but I do find that salt bars can tend to sometimes get a partial gel so by sea popping we can ensure that we get a nice consistent gel through the bar of soap so i'm going to cover my soap heat my oven to 75 degrees c or 170 degrees f as soon as i put the soap in i'm going to turn the oven off and leave the door shut now salt bars set up really quickly and if you leave them too long you won't be able to cut them which is why a lot of people use cavity moulds. For me I find cutting around the two hour mark works perfectly. So here we are two hours later. Now I've taken mine out of the wooden box and you can see that liner is peeling away nice and cleanly and if we gently press the top of the soap we can see that it's nice and firm. If you can squidge the soap or it's a bit sticky then it's not yet ready to cut but remember as soon as it's firm enough we need to cut it because otherwise it will get too hard and it will crumble. Now do bear in mind this is very early in the saponification stage and two things to be aware of, this soap is going to be hot, not burning hot so that it will burn your hands as such from heat, um, but you may not be used to handling hot soap, it is going to be hot. Also bear in mind the lye has not yet been fully saponified so you must be wearing your gloves at this stage. So let's just go through and cut our soap and as you can see at this point it's going to cut really beautifully and not be a problem. If you leave it too long you're just not going to get it cut and even with a knife you may be able to get a knife through it but it's likely that your bar will just shatter. <laughs> Now once I've cut my salt bars, I like to stack them back up together, it doesn't matter if they're not in exactly the right order, but all the time that they're warm, I like to keep them stacked together so they can stay warm and don't drop the temperature down really quickly. So therefore, as you can see here, I'm just piling them all back up again, and then I'll just cover them with a clean tea towel to just keep them nice and insulated, and then I'll just leave them until the next day. So the next day I'll take my little stack of salt bars and they're all nice and cool now and I will bevel them. I find them perfectly fine to bevel the next day, they haven't gone too hard, you don't get them going all crumbly or anything. For me it seems to work perfectly well. So I'm just going to take a vegetable peeler and just run it around the edges of each of the bars just to bevel them and finish them off. I won't do all of them on screen because I'm sure you don't need to see me beveling all 11 bars of soap. But I do think it finishes them off really nicely. So I'll leave you with a final picture of the soap we made today and some of the other soaps that I've made using this assessment. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!